technology to use or no one would actually use it. You absolutely can, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yes, you can, um, you can inject code that can cause harm. You're right. That's, that's worth it. Um, you can inject code that causes harm, but that's, that's there. This is the, the point, is that it's already there, that functionality we can already do. But you can inject that code only if you can change the source code. Right? And if you can change the source code, you can do a hell of a lot of dangerous things. So there's a trade-off here. Yeah, you, ca you have some element of danger with AOP. But when we think about like our web app deployments, the security trade-off that we get is a lot better from what we can protect against versus the, the changes that we can make in a malicious manner. Sure. Although it's great for pen testing, which we'll get to later. and you don't know what's going on. A a excellent question. Uh, very real concern. A lot of actual effort has gone from the AOP community to create visualization tools and debugging tools that will actually help us to determine when that happens. Okay, so there's sophisticated tool sets to help us with that. And what people have done it before have said that it's actually easier to debug than it is on a regular OOP application. So changing our existing processes and the objections that go with that. Yeah, absolutely. That's real. Uh, that's a real one that's not easy to change. Um, so I, we're going to we're going to suggest some adoption strategies. Basically, it comes to phased implementation, starting in the lab then starting with really non-critical functions. And you saw how easy it was, right? You looked at it. It is that easy. It, it does, it's not a sophisticated skill set to do some of the very simple things. Okay? So we'll revisit that after, but good question. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's not uh, necessarily always as straightforward. Although that was a real application, it's not always that straightforward. That's true, but if the same people who are developing your applications are the one who are developing your aspects, they know it best. So again, any control that you put in place is going to have that complexity inherent in it. Yes. You. Uh, okay, if you're, if you're using Spring and Aspect J separately, then you're in real trouble. Um, but if you're using, let's say, multiple aspects, right? Multiple, if you're getting at the point of multiple aspects that may function on the same method, no? Right. So what you find is in, actually in Spring, specifically, or Aspect J, there's support, and, and in fact, you have to do this as part of your process, is prioritization of aspects. Okay, so you can actually say which aspect comes first before the others. Um, are those visual Are they going to tell you which aspect occurred at one time? Yes, if you're doing it during, run if you're doing it during debugging. The, the spring aspects might be a little different. I'm not entirely sure about how it affects with the spring aspects. I know with aspect J, it can tell you which aspect is occurring, but I have to look into that. How does it interfere or how does it work with Well, it would be like, I guess, anywhere where you do more than one level of input validation in the sense that uh, it might pass one and fail the other. Uh, you do have to know what's happening in your application. So you, you may, for instance, allow something through here and it might get denied by the rest of your 
input validation or vice versa. But the idea behind this is you do usually have some level of input validation. So that's a very real scenario. You just want to add to what's already there, right? Again, it takes you on. It's not like you can't know what's happening in the application. You do need to know that. So it depends on how much you actually implement. But once you start to, uh, once you start to, uh, like a real true AOP implementation, uh, really helps actually your your metrics because the complexity, and you can see that looking at it, right? The complexity goes down dramatically. And so the studies have shown that the number of cross-cutting concerns go, or the number of uh, weaving of cross-cutting concerns goes down and, and you actually modularize your code better, the cleaner the code is, the less complex it is, and the less defects you have. Okay, but that's, that's probably, a, we're ways away from that. I, I'll, put one, I'll take one last question because we have to move on. Beyond uh, input validation, uh, can it help you prevent against SQL injection? That's a great question. Uh, we're going to show you a video, so I'm not going to answer that right now. In fact, well, we will answer it right now with a video. Okay, uh, we are back to our daffodil application over here. And now we are looking at actually inside the code. Um, the class that we are looking at is, actually I can't see the class name. It's uh, ex Excel creator.java. Um, this is a class that actually allows you to create uh, Excel sheets inside CRM and you can actually export uh, all your contacts inside CRM itself. So imagine, if you will, a scenario where you're doing source code review of this application and you're walking through it. And that's what we are trying to do over here. We go through the application and we start noticing that there are multiple queries that are taking place. Uh, multiple. Uh, different, at different parts of the code itself, we are seeing the queries that are taking place. And right over here, can you magnify it maybe? It'll make it easier. No, I just um, magnify. Just start the magnifier. Hang on one second. I'm just going to try to magnify it. So this is export Excel. This is, a, like we said, a function to actually create Excel. And one of the things that happens in Daffodil is uh, they use dynamic queries everywhere. Okay, so what we want to show you is some dynamic SQL happening. So I guess it's not here anyways. Uh, sorry, the code is a little small, but we'll try to talk to it. Basically, behind the scenes, what's, uh, what we saw over here a little further back, there we go. What we are seeing over here is a simple statement trying to execute uh, a query. And if you look at it, it says, let me go closer, that way I can read it out. Execute query, query info, which is a string inside execute query, which is coming in through statement, statement dot execute query with a string inside. What do you think can happen when you have execute query? What could it lead to? Execute query with a string. Execute query with a string, correct. It would lead to possibly injection. It could lead, it is possibly, more than likely, a SQL, a dynamic SQL that is being created. So what we are going to try to do is actually use um, an aspect to figure out every single occurrence of dynamic SQL that is inside our entire piece of code base. What we have here is um, some pieces of code. I'll try to point to it so that way you guys can follow along. Right over here, we have java.sql.statement.execute star. And in front of statement, you see a plus sign. What it says is whenever the statement class or subclass is called, look at this aspect and try to look at what is happening next. Then we have execute. 